Terry. I'm Teresa. And we're with. Uh, this is Creative Connections. Yeah, so I, <laughs> I get all tongue tied there. Sorry about that. Yeah, nice. yeah. I'm trying to see if we're live here on Facebook. I'll watch that. You just go ahead and start talking because we are. Oh, okay. All right. Live. Okay, so have we got anybody coming on here? We're just uh, hoping we get some company today. Today, we're going to be talking about identity and destiny, and this is a part one. I don't know if there's going to be two parts or yeah. three or what. This is this is kind of a... Are we on here? There we go. We're here. Okay, so if you want to... Um, if you're coming on in the comments, put your... Hello, here I am. Oh, someone else wants <laughs> to say hello. Yes, this is Plissat. This is our baby. Yeah, you can tell years. them about her. She's 19 years old. We had her since we moved here to the island. Mm. She's having some health issues lately. Yeah. Uh, with the... Uh, yeah, health. the the plumbing's not working... That great. In, ...that great in the last month or so. I mean, she's been... Other than a little bit of skin condition here and there, she's been very healthy yeah. all her life. Um, so mommy's learning some herbal remedies. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And so we, she had some uh, urinary problems earlier in the week and and now she had a little bit of uh, bowel issues, and so just went upstairs and and saw that she she left a real nice big gift in the she litter box. So she poo You wouldn't think you get so excited about your cat taking a poop, but <laughs> when they can't go, you know. Yeah. Anyway, we'll probably edit this part out. <laughs> Uh, well, <laughs> maybe not i don't know this this is who we are we love our pets we we love jesus we love each other and we love our pets so you know that's our girl yeah. she looks really good on camera doesn't yeah. she yeah yeah well, i can do there right <laughs> yeah so today is maybe going to be a little bit different um i we usually kind of banter back and yeah. forth a little bit today. Um, I'm afraid you might be having to listen to me a lot, but you know, Terry hopefully will jump in whenever, whenever he wants. And if you guys are putting comments, that would be fantastic mm -hmm. because Terry's going to follow the comments and I'm going to kind of follow the, the teaching that I've got outlined here. We've got some scriptures to go. So if you want to grab your Bible um that would be terrific well even if you're watching the replay we um we do record this and then we upload it to youtube so you can always watch it later but um it would be really fun to to have you on here and commenting while we're going and but i know that's not convenient for everyone yeah 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 we try to put a time period where at least some people can can show up and yeah. So I don't know, should we just dive in? Yeah, dive in. Both okay. feet. <laughs> I think you dive this way. <laughs> head head first, right? Yeah. You yeah. could. <laughs> yeah. Anyways. I'll put the cat down first. I don't think she likes the water. Right? <laughs> no, she's fine. So identity and destiny, um, when I asked the Lord in the last week or so for a topic, this is what came up to me and it just kind of grew and grew as I, um, as I was writing things out and going to different scriptures and stuff. And um, I hope everybody can hear me okay. <clears throat> yeah, so, and... And then we've got some confirmation, including um, our pastor's <laughs> message this past Sunday uh, was to do with with destiny and and identity. Yeah. 
and it was basically the, what um, what I was already praying and thinking about. So yeah, that was interesting because I was at a men's breakfast on Saturday this past Saturday, and the speaker was talking about identity, and it was really caught mm, my attention. Yeah. And then we go to our church Sunday, the following Sunday, and did our pastor also talk about identity? Yeah. And mm -hmm. then we, the third thing was, you can explain, I forget what it was, though. There's, <laughs> there's three, there's three of them. Yeah. I think it was, oh, it was a, a post that someone had put, I think. Okay. Anyways, I, I, I don't remember either, but I, I have lots of notes here. And, um, you know, we just, Holy Spirit, we invite you. Maybe you yes. can do that, Terry. Yeah, Holy Spirit, we just thank you for this this word that you put on our heart to share. Mm -hmm. How you gave a confirmation in three ways, Lord. Mm -hmm. and we just thank you. And I just uh, ask you now to join us in this meeting. Mm -hmm. And I ask you to have your hands on Teresa and just give her the words to share her, Lord, and myself too, when you want me to speak it. Mm -hmm. In Jesus' name. Amen. 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 So everyone wants to know his or her destiny. What's my purpose? Why am I here? Basically, what it comes down is we, we want to know what makes me valuable, right? Um, our destiny tends to get tangled up with our identity. So uh, one of the pitfalls of that is that we think, oh, I made a wrong turn. I didn't make the right decision. <clears throat> and so we feel like, Excuse me. We feel like if we make a wrong turn or we don't make the right decision or uh, something like that, that we messed up. Now, our, that's it. One chance, you know, you're done. I remember our pastor back in Sarnia, Ontario, he gave a, a message that just really struck me and stayed with me. And he was saying, like in baseball, they say three strikes and you're out. Mm -hmm. But he says, God doesn't say that. God says, keep swinging until you hit it. And so, uh, and I heard another pe person talk about destiny as, you know, um, how they have the, the, it's called like bumper bowling. They have mm -hmm. those, they have those things in, I don't know what they're called. There's like these inflatable things that they put in the gutter. So you, can't get a gutter ball and you know i love that because i just always <laughs> get gutter balls and so that he said that basically that's like god's will god's destiny for you if you're seeking him even if you go off track for a while if you you come back to seek him it's like that is like that bumper bowling and and you're gonna you're gonna get there and in the right lane just you know so um yeah so but our destiny gets tangled up with our identity and then our destiny ulti ultimately gets tangled up in what we do so this is especially true of creatives so we feel alive like when you're drawing this is just yeah. you know when i'm writing you know you just feel like oh this is what I was made for. This is what I said. I feel alive. This is who I am. And like, that's the mistake is that we think this is, this is who I am. So um, in John 15, one to five, Jesus talks about, not yet. Jesus talks about seasons that we can expect in our lives. Yeah. Yeah. He talks about seasons that we can expect in our lives. So there's in, in John 15, one to five, it talks about seasons of flourishing and it talks about seasons of pruning. So in the flourishing season, um, I've got James 1, verse 17. Every good and perfect gift is from above, coming down from the father of heavenly lights, who does not change like shifting shadows. So as I was writing this up today, I kind of got in my, uh, I'm a storyteller. So here's this little story. Imagine that there's a boy 
and he has a young boy. He has a beautiful soprano voice. Everyone praises him and his wonderful ability. People book him to sing at weddings, funerals, other special occasions. Maybe he's singing the, the national anthem at sports events. He wins talent contests at school and in the community. He sings solos in church that move people to tears. He's grateful to God for the good and perfect gift of a beautiful singing voice. He loves to sing more than anything else. He feels alive when he sings. It's who he is. It's why he was created. And then we come to the pruning season. Puberty sets in. The boy's voice changes. He can't hit the high notes anymore. When he tries, his voice cracks and squeaks, and he <laughs> moves people to chuckles rather than to tears. Yeah. Mm -hmm. He wonders, how could God have done this to me? What is a singer who can't sing? He's nothing. He has no purpose. He's worthless. Why did God even give him the gift in the first place? But the father of lights has no shifting shadows. He doesn't change. The gift may change. It may even be replaced with something else. But the father doesn't change. It brings us to our next scripture, which is John 15, 1 to 2. I am the true vine, and my father is the gardener. He cuts off every branch in me that bears no fruit, while every branch that does bear fruit, he prunes so that it will be even more fruitful. Pruning is a painful reality, but it's not to diminish us. It's so we can be even more fruitful, even if we bear a different kind of fruit. If the boy pushes through the pain, he will discover other abilities that he didn't even know he had. He may even discover singing again in a new and different way. So now it's Teresa testimony time. <laughs> cool. I love these. <laughs> okay. Um, I've always written. Like I, I remember making up stories sitting in my stroller. So I was under five. I don't know how old I was, <laughs> but um, I've always been a storyteller and I've always enjoyed writing when uh, even, you know, vocabulary, spelling, grammar. I loved it all. I loved it all. And I just felt like this is me. This is who I was created to be. And I also love to sing. And so um, you know, I, I did that for a long time and until the Lord asked me to lay it down. But um, in 2010, after several years of severe, severe stress, I had a breakdown. And I, I could barely carry on a conversation. Um, I had a general anxiety disorder, they yeah. called it. Mm -hmm. And it, it would, it was just, it felt like every cell, every atom in my body was just going at a hundred miles an hour in every single direction. I, I felt like absolute chaos. It, I just felt like screaming all the time. It was really, really difficult. And I was not able to even put together two sentences of an email. I remember I was seeing a counselor and he was encouraging me to journal, which I had always done all my life. I could not journal. I could not even vocalize all the, the angst and chaos and everything inside. I, I just was incapable of it. And so I felt at that time, I really thought I would never write again. And um, during that time, it kind of started during church. Because when you're in that kind of a state of mind and emotion, 
where you feel like everything's spinning out of control to sit there for, you know, uh, at even 20 minutes to sit there and listen to a sermon was just not possible. I, I would have, you know, I th- I was afraid that I would end up getting up in, and just running out or screaming or something. And it was just because of all the turmoil inside of me. It was just, unless you have been in that place where you've had that, you cannot understand. It's not a point of, oh, we'll just, you know, trust God, you'll be okay. And it it's so far beyond anything that you could control. So the one thing I found that helped me is I started doodling in church and, and I started getting like, um, I don't know what, if I started with pencil crayons or whatever it was, and I just started doodling and drawing just because I felt like if I can keep my hands busy, if I can do something, yeah. then, you know, then I can actually listen to the sermon and, and I'll be okay. I'll keep my sanity. <laughs> um, so that's that's what I did. And from that, uh, there was one point where I learned how to, to do some art journaling. And, and I, I did a collage in an art journal. And in that collage, I put on worship music. And, and in the process of doing that art piece, I was able to process five years of extreme pain that I had not been able to vocalize. I had not been able to write about. I was able to do it through that collage and, and, and art, just paint and stuff. And from there, I, I started painting and, and uh, I, I don't think I'll ever be a great artist, but um, I've done some things that, that I feel pretty good about. But here was another creative endeavor that uh, God gave me. So like when I was singing back in in Ontario and I was on a worship team and I loved it. I loved it. And it was just like, oh, this is, I've always wanted to do this. And just, and being a part of God's presence and leading people in worship, it was so wonderful. And then the Lord spoke to me and said, okay, I want you to lay it down now. And I'm like, what? <laughs> I wasn't happy. With the Lord. <laughs> yeah. And, uh, and then he says, don't worry, I got something else for you. Yeah. And from there, that very day I was making the decision, someone prophesied to me. And he said, God is going to be using your voice in a very <laughs> new and surprising way. And oh, it's going to bring a lot of joy to others and it's going to bring a lot of joy to you. And it ended up within weeks, I was approached by the children's pastor with a puppet and just I'll abbreviate the whole thing, but I ended up um, learning ventriloquism. And so three weeks. <laughs> That's what she had, three weeks. And I, I, I said, God, if, you know, if this is really you, if this is the new thing that you were talking about, yeah. then I'm going to trust you that I can do this. And so I actually got to sing through my puppet. <laughs> so <laughs> so I, I talked through the puppets, but I also sang through the puppets. So I, I still got to sing, but I got to do it through the puppets. And, and it was just, it was a few years that it was a lot of fun. Yeah. and everything and then came a time where i could i could no longer physically do that because of some physical limitations i could no longer do that and so that was you know that came to an end and then like i said it was after that time that i had the breakdown but then i i learned to paint and to do art and I actually did a little bit of teaching art journaling as a healing um, tool for people. So that was something else. And even though I thought that I would never write again, I have since um, since that time, I've 
written and published five books. I'm working on the sixth yep. one right really now. Good. <laughs> <laughs> right now. So, um, you know, God, it, it was a season of pruning, but it's um, like this scripture that we'll read at the end is where God says that he prunes not to not to to diminish us he prunes so that we'll be even more fruitful even if it the fruit looks completely different or it's in a completely different way than what you would ever imagine you know um but if i had held to well i'll finish this this story of the boy if i had held to my identity as a singer then I would not have been willing to give up that singing. Yeah. And I never would have learned what it was to be a ventriloquist and a children's minister. I never would have, I never would have gone there. And if I had clung to I'm a ventriloquist, then I never would have gone on to, to learn how to do art. But art was never on my radar at all. It was always writing. And then it came back to like, okay, here you go. But if I'm um, now, now I'm a writer, I'm a writer. That's who I am. That's who I am. Um, what happens when, you know, when I get older and, and I can no longer do this? Am I no longer valuable? So it's really a danger. When we um, tie our identity to what we do. Okay. So if the boy in our little story here, the, the soprano singer, if he had pushed through that pain, he probably would have discovered other abilities that he didn't even know he had, just like I did. He might have even discovered singing again, but in a different way. Yeah. You know, not singing soprano but he might have learned it in a different way so untangling identity from our gifts ephesians 2 10 is one of my ultimate favorite scriptures for we are god's workmanship created in christ jesus to do good works which god has prepared in advance for us to do and this one that says handiwork there's other versions that say masterpiece or poetry. So what we do is not who we are. We'll most likely come to a time in our lives when we can no longer do that thing. And so, like I said, what that? So God has created good works for us to do, but we are his workmanship. We are God's creative work created in his image, but we do not define who God is. And the creative thing that we do does not define who we are. God defines us. And when we surrender our identity to him, instead of chasing after it, then we'll find contentment and peace in whatever stage of life that we're in. Can I share something here? You sure can. Um, I got a bit of a testimony too. Um, I've been doing sound in churches since the um, early 90s. I did church, sound in church for about 24 years. In our previous church, um, we were moving into a new building, getting a brand new sound system. I was really excited. But before that, I was getting... A bad attitude about doing sound. It was very wasn't very uplifting, but eventually the church asked me to step down from doing sound. And that 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 hurt. But God has something else in store for me too, because about that time I was starting to flag, worship flag in the church. And then the church eventually asked me, instead of doing the sound, they asked me to take over the creative worship arts, flaggers, dancers, and artists. And that really is, spoke to my spirit. And then God just led me to grow that group at that church. And now I'm no longer identified as a sound tech, but now I'm a flagger. It's another work. And then I got hurt. And then now I can no longer flag. Like, oh, I hurt my arm. I can't flag anymore. 
And I was bummed out. And the lawyer said, no, 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 no. It's, I want you to dance now. You don't want it because I hurt my arm. I tore a, a ligament pretty bad in my I tended my arm pretty bad. So I said, I want you to dance. So I got into dancing. And that was great. And then we had to move to another church in God let us know the church and I got a really small dance for it. I go, well, I can't flag her at all now because I'm flagging the dance. He's watching, watching the dance. And eventually God just kind of asked me to step back from it all. But that doesn't define who I am. I'm, I have, as Teresa put here, uh, many works from the Lord that I can be used for. Mm -hmm. And it doesn't mean that those are my identity. My identity is in Jesus Christ. Amen. And it's not in the works that I do. And so God keeps reminding me of that. Mm -hmm. So even though he had to tell them to take me out of the cell, I find that I still have the skills and the church we're at now. We have a lot of young people on board and I'm able to help um, mentor them through it without having to grab the brain of the sound yeah. again yeah. and run with it. But yeah. I just kind of sit back and let them do the thing and then I jump in when they need a little help. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there's such a real, there's such a freedom in that, in not having to be the thing you know there's such a freedom and just okay well what 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 work have you got for me to do right now god it's like terry and i are um we started this year an online marketplace for christian creatives and that's the page that we're on on facebook right now and mm -hmm. your youtube channel and so that's that's actually taken me away from my writing quite a bit. And, and I'm having to learn how to balance all that. Um, but that's where God has us right now. Yeah. And we feel that um, that's how he has us serving the body of Christ. Yeah. And, yeah. and one thing the Lord showed me too is all the words. I didn't realize that a prophetic word given over me about 10 years ago that God, he sees me as a pitch hitter and in God, in, in, in God's team. Like pitch mm -hmm. hitter is a guy that jumps in there. And if mm -hmm. I, I looked up the term, but basically I'm a jack of all trades type thing. And I can fill in many areas mm -hmm. of the, the experience and the works that God's given me to do over the years. So that's why I don't define myself with it anymore. Yeah. And so the next scripture um, is just what we've been talking about. For whoever wants to save his life will lose it. But whoever loses his life for me will find it, Matthew 16, 25. So at each stage with Terry and I, as you heard our testimonies, the Lord um, would ask us, okay, I want you to, this thing that you love, this thing that defines you, I want you to give it up. Yeah. You know, I got to prune that thing, you know, so you can bear, your, it's not that we're being punished. You know, we were we were bearing fruit where we were at, but I want to prune that thing so you can bear even more fruit, you know, so you can be even more fruitful. So we are meant to bear fruit always, but we might not always bear the fruit yeah. in the same way. And if we find our identity in Christ alone, seeking to remain in intimate connection with him daily then we will always be fruitful, no matter what. You know, even if if we're sitting in a nursing home someplace with dementia, there's in some way God will um, see that we will be fruitful. Um, so I just want to close with John 15, 5. This is identity. <laughs> this is identity. I am the vine. This is Jesus speaking. You are the branches. If you remain in me and I in you, you will bear much fruit. But apart from me, you can do nothing. And so this has been Identity and Destiny, part one. And if you like this um, teaching or conversation, we hope that you will join us next time, which will be June the 1st yep. at the same time, Thursdays, 4 p.m. Same channel, <laughs> same station. Yeah, 4 p.m. Atlantic Standard Time on Facebook Live. Yeah, and somebody else down here wants to say goodbye. Yeah. Let me pick her up. 
Okay. There she goes. There she She's is. been bugging me to get there this up. There she is. There's Lucette. There we go. Okay, look at the camera, sweetie. Look at the camera. Show them your pretty face. There. No, no she doesn't. <laughs> she goes, just hold me securely. Just, Don't play around. She just wants her daddy. Okay, so thanks so much for for joining us on the live or um, for watching us on the replay. Yeah. God bless you guys. God, hang in there. God bless you. Okay. Bye. Bye.